All right. Hello. Hello. Hey, everybody. Um, Joey here. All right. Let me see if I, I got all new buttons. Uh, let's see what I can do here. Yeah, buddy. Mr. Anderson. Good morning. Hello. Hey, man. How's it going? Good morning. Going? Happy I'm New Year. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for, you know, resetting this. How was your holiday? Was it, uh, did you get up to much? Was it Un a little, oh, actually, I was going to say uneventful, but then I'd be lying. Uh, uh, family stuff, weather stuff, travel stuff. Like it all, yeah. it all kind of sucked, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and you're in Cali, I think, if you're physically there right now. I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm in LA. And you guys just have the ridiculous NOAA-level rain going on? I'm not lucky enough to be living up in the hills or in santa barbara where they're really getting i am like on a very gentle hill and so i have no water problems whatsoever but um you know los angeles doesn't they typically have a drought drainage problem mm -hmm. um because nothing is built for it from um, houses like people Houses are just like full of leaks because they just it's like we get rain once every three years, and it's really bad. Oh, I should fix that for the next one, and then they don't. They don't, and like that's just what the housing stock looks like. Um, you know, it's a combination of it's just desert water very quickly, and, and then it's also uh, just concrete. There's not a lot of green spaces absorbing water. And so you I, just it could... I totally hear you. Yeah, yeah. I, I, well, actually, I don't hear you. You're, you're you're breaking up a little bit. So forgive me. Um, I don't know if you got me all the way or. If, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, th just the idea that Kevin Costner couldn't leave his house to go pick up a Golden Globe, like it's, it's some serious stuff going on. Yeah, I don't know if I believe that either. <laughs> right. Part of me is like. <laughs> Yeah, um, Kevin Costner is just over it. You're right. He, he's got a helicopter somewhere that could get him up over the, get, get him over there. You know, right? Unless he's like so, so, unless he's so remote out in Santa Barbara, reined in on all sides. But I, I like, I feel like <laughs> back entrance, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, we jump right into freaking weather and uh, fun stuff. But let's. Uh, so you're you're Bryce Anderson. And you're part. You're a producer. You're part of the Omega Runners project. I don't know how you describe these things when you're kind of living in Web three, the future. Uh, how how do you describe Omega Runners like to you know the guy you a person you meet in the elevator? I call it. You know, I, I call it a. Uh content project that is content project that is launching through NFTs, right? Where NFTs and comic books really are kind of the first simultaneous arenas that we are diving into. And the way it, the is because, you know, the team is really um, we're all movie um, and you know, that's been our primary business I'm probably the, I'm the baby on the team and I've been working in this industry for 11 years. Um, <laughs> the goal of runner, of course, project and a viable NFT project, but the real goal was looking at these projects that were coming out and saying like, okay, these have interesting things, projects, they have interesting things going on as sort of pieces of of art and pieces of branding we have this like really cool new exciting space here but when ip and when we look at content which is like like can i make this a global franchise um uh kind of kick-started his career by pulling the hunger games off the shelf and saying this book a franchise and you know was was proven very correct with that with that idea idea but it's like okay can this be that level of a global phenomenon that 
actress from the general public, et cetera. And the ch- short answer with most NFT projects, not all of them, but mo- most of them, in their outright no, no or not in their current form. Like it's a little from a single two dimensional image to a viable story that is sellable on a grander scale. Um, and we were like, okay, so what happens instead from just a create an image, sell it as an NFT, hope it works out, go. And we take a project that we've been working on as a television show, something that we were working on that, that was going to play in what, you know, a more traditional arena, launching it in those traditional arenas directly. What if we go and we, we launch it first inside of uh, launch it first in NFTs because it's the new model. It's the future. Uh, um, you know, when we when we go the traditional route, we sell all of them before we get started, typically. Um, and then that, then you're building it, but you and in the Web three world, it's like, okay, what if we retain ownership for longer? What if we retain creative control for longer? And so, so that's been. Uh, you know, that's how we describe Runner. Okay. Um, just from a more project sort of business oriented talk about it. So the, the, the idea that you launch a, a, a new property, a new universe, a new, uh, I don't know, content vehicle, uh, you know, like, um, and using this, this Web3 world, it, it, uh, yet, uh, you know your, your your team are kind of I don't, I don't know, traditional Hollywood, but whatever that means, right? Like that's all been disrupted as well. Like movie people or TV people. Um, oh, are you still there? Um, I don't see video anymore. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Can you hear me, man? Sorry, we just experienced the downside of doing this on my phone, which is that I got a phone call come in and it cut out all of your audio. And oh, yeah, 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 you. yeah. Great. Yes, sir. Yeah. Let me know when you're back. I apologize. Yeah. <laughs> now, we, now we see your house. So maybe, maybe I... Maybe I show my face so you don't worry about. All right. So Bryce is working through some. Oh, and then he dropped off to it completely. All right. Uh, since you, you've gathered here, I appreciate it. Um, he'll be back in a moment. Um, maybe I show off uh, some of the coolness of uh, Omega Runners. Uh, I find this fascinating. If you go to Omega Runner Singular, dot xyz or or mega x runner dot xyz um what you see is uh their their website oh here he's coming back let's see um i don't know what's going on and i will blame free stream no all good blame it on blame it on the Um, rain i don't know how much that explanation you heard but basically because i joined them i come in and it killed the stream yeah delightful um, but, uh, um, what were we talking about? Yeah, yeah, all, all good. Uh, I, I was getting into just the, the idea of taking a, um, a traditional Hollywood, uh, kind of creators and then moving you guys jumping into web three world, which is, it's got its own problems, you know, whether the whole economy of it all, and then the, where do I get? customers you know users or consumers um and there's such a a, you know a hurdle to jump over uh technically i need a wallet to go buy this thing you know it's kind of like your 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 audience narrows and narrows and narrows um yeah and interesting because you know when we talk about about traditional media uh still the game of customer acquisition mm -hmm. right even if you put out a feature film it's people to come and see this so it's a big marketing problem uh, um 
the traditional media is that there are these spaces people are programmed to, to go to or a streaming service or television, something like that, that, you know, movie theater, somebody's going to show up and see it just because it's there. Um, yeah. Um, whereas, you know, in Web3 on the internet, you can post things online and get, you can get nothing. Um, um, but what you can get, especially within the Web3 can forward and saying, oh, that's interesting. What is it that you're doing differently with IP? What is it technology? What is it that you're doing? Um, this sort of advancing you know, money straight up in Web3 um, because people are interested in startups and they're in kind of, um, you know, that's all kind of based in crypto as this decentralized as progressive economy. See this new business kind of, you know, to use the two often mean, you know, these businesses of your, the call it Hollywood movie studios, and the businesses of the future, these decentralized um, um, kind of uh, organizations. And, and mm -hmm. I think that's a question that I'm very something that brings a certain number of people in. Now, one of the day, it's still is not going to work unless the content is good. And so um, again and again, it's like, okay, you know, we sat, to, you know, some incredible partners. Um, you know, Blaze Hemingway is our writer. He's also a screenwriter who, you know, spent many, many years at the Disney Story Trust, did on everything from like Tron Legacy to Zootopia, Wreck-It Ralph, Frozen, like so many of these. And uh, um, then Cedric Nicholas Troyan, who's a he's an Academy Award nominated, um, who did all of the effects on the first Snow White and the Huntsman, and he does those like creature effects, but he also is a director in his own right. Um, creates beautiful looking live action sequences, and then he's got a huge, you know, a real, real deep. Uh, and so, so when it came time to making an NFT, which this, not just trying to make a good NFT collection, but make a good NFT collection that can, and that can be directly translated into comic books and can be translated into these other mediums, like it, it is it authentically itself in every iteration. And this is something that I think when you create, um, simply create, a 2D character, it's not always animation ready, right? Just depending on the way it's designed. And you'll see people create a 2D character and then have to go and recreate the 2D character in 3D, recreate the character in 3D, but dumbed down for animation so that it'll be created within the budget that they have. And by the time you get to the end of it, that's on screen, looks wildly different from whatever it was you started with and i think um enough experience we've sort of really taken care to create something uh you know it will be very very consistent yeah products from what it is right now uh uh so you know we we're we're just the the dark block dudes we kind of build a, a tool um and we work with the creators and there's just so much uh, content being created that, you know, guy like, I don't have a lot of time for the stuff like that our, our customers, our partners, but I sat down and I read issue one and two, and now I'm all in. Like I want, I love this universe. I love what you guys have done, the storytelling, the art. I want animation. I want to rock, you know, I want stuffed animals versions. I want to play a video game. <laughs> it, it, it's very interesting how you, uh, in in essentially two issues, you you've sucked me into a world that I want to spend more time in. Um, what what's the like? What happens next for you guys? Like Cartoon Network, how long? Or HBO Max deal, how long? <laughs> how long do I have to wait? Yeah, you know, it, it's a funny balance because we are still at a place where. 
our, you know, we haven't launched our primary collection. We have <laughs> launch project, right? right? And so we have a community. We, we have a very vocal. Um, and of course, everybody's impatient. Everybody wants the, the next thing now. But I think yes. action of, of the property. It's in our best interest right now. The uh, collection drop to focus on um, growing the community. So place like, like Amazon, like Netflix, somebody like that. We have this effect behind us and we can go to them and say, hey, this pitch base, right? It comes with an audience. We, mm -hmm. It found, right? even if it's a small audience, people in Web3, it doesn't have to be huge. Um, but I can take a 5,000 person audience problem. It's the, the nothingness into a TV show or you end up getting uh, both the deal, but also the creative points and timeline development cycle. And what that's called is like, <clears throat> so a development cycle basically is a student buy it from you. Um, we're not going to put it into production right away, but we, we are going to and, you know, create a couple of scripts and prove to us that it's prove to us. And, you know, 90% of the time, if you're inside of that process, it, you won't get out of that process. And that's just, you know, that is just how, how a reality of how TV shows, you know, one executive mm -hmm. buys this a year and a half later, they leave. Now you have a new executive who comes in yeah. and looks at everything the old, old executive did, and they're trying to create something new in the same way. And it, it, it you know, it, it becomes this like kind of messy process. Whereas if you can have a fan base behind you, you become everyone's priority. Or, or you can go in and actually up front, if you want to buy this, that's all good. But I will be in production by you know October first. Then it becomes a contractual deal, and they greenlight you immediately. And like that's, you know, that is still there that, you know, we can definitely do it, but it's, it's so yeah, that's the it, 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 it is interesting. Like so what you've done with like the, uh, the NFT you launched October it was earlier. It was last year. Um, it's like a Kickstarter ish. It's a uh, kind of crowdfunding ish. Um, but you actually, I got something, you know, mm -hmm. uh, right off the bat. Like I got a, a comic book to enjoy, and then I, I asked, can I ask how many are already done? Like, do do what, uh, and how are you going to release the future uh, issues? Like, is there a, a time every month? I, I we get one, or what, what's the plan for the story? Because I'm itching. Blaze will tell you that he has it in his head for 100 issues. I think that's probably more. I think he's probably got it um, for the first arc, at least. But the the beauty of the world is the world. We really did architect it. We were like, okay, this is a world, and this is a story we're going to talk about our, you know, from the first books. So we've got Ozzy and Jada and Evita and, you know, Darius Mace. Like, those characters. Um, But that's just one story inside of it. And you can go in and you could go invent stories about, you know, and with these deep back stories, deep cultures, all this sort of intonation, uh, personal drama, which is like literally endless. Um, yeah. Um, and, and it's the, the, the pur purpose, like when we set out to do this, we were like, okay, look at all these projects that now. But they're realizing that a lack of story is going to hold them back until they figure out how to how to inject not have inherently any sort of like real deep narrative. There is like there is there is subjects in the same way we talk about branding, having story, right? Which is right that is like an event. Um, but there's not a lot where you can point to something and be like, that's a good good guy flint and you know resolution will either be a b or c right right and, uh, it, it, oh sorry um and it's just this original question which is that we have three issues um inked colored done 
um, three, but other than that, it's finished. Um, and then we have, you know, out, um, that will go into production soon. Yeah. Uh, I already uh, imagine like a MCU level, there's going to be a whole spinoff on the, the whole DMV. The people working there, the taking like there's a whole universe inside all these organizations. Yeah, uh, we've got we've got a uh, a quick. Let me see, I'm, I'm playing with new buttons. Uh, can you show us the comic vault without revealing the entire comic? Um, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna. Uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to do some show and tell. Oh, all right. Uh, so yeah, let me see. Please I'm do. Playing with new stuff today. So what we have here is. Uh, Omega X Runner dot X Y Z. Um, you had your launch. It was up on Open C. I think I actually. Uh, you can snag uh, the NFT today still uh, on secondary market. Um, and then what? The kind of the dark block. You know they pay the bills over here at this house. Uh, the, we've added a comic vault uh, to uh, your site. I'm going to actually connect with my wallet. I'm getting a little MetaMask pop-up, which you don't see. Signing. It's searching through my wallet. Do I own an Omega Runner uh, NFT? I do. And what I'm able to do is uh, authenticate ownership and consume content. So like issue number one, I know you guys printed a physical comic uh, and you know went yep. to the post office and mailed them all out. Um, um, Which is we, amazing. We have a third-party logistics. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it wasn't you, you know, bringing well. doorbells. <laughs> uh, but issue number two, um, kind of using uh, Dark Block, um, you know, the brilliant Michaela, your one of a uh, project manager superhero. Um, you know, she clicked a couple buttons, and she was able to distribute issue number two to holders in you know five minutes. So I'm, I'm going to load up issue two, uh, what it's doing on the dark block side, just in case uh, any non dark block noobs. Uh, we're pulling uh, the file that's encrypted from our weave. We're decrypting it. I have validated that, yes, I'm an owner of this NFT and I'm going to deliver it on screen. So I'm already, oh, I've got it preloaded. Uh, so yeah, here's the, the cover. Um, of issue number two, and then you know, page one, and then there are what are 25 pages. So, uh, if you want to consume and enjoy, go pick up a copy of this. Uh, I actually I sat down and read through uh, last night and this morning. You know, I had an idea, but I didn't know the names of all the people, and I didn't know all the the nuance. And now I'm in. Like you sucked me in. In you know two issues, Blaze did. By the way, Blaze Hemingway, Google him on like hit him up on Twitter. This guy is brilliant and snarky, and I love following him. <laughs> I love his attitude. I love him. I don't. I haven't met him, but I love him. Um, yeah, he's a wonderful writer. He's you know like all great writers. Also, he's an incredible pitcher, which makes him just like to have in the room. You know ideas popping out of this guy's head like like some sort of um and then the other person to shout out here is fabrizio constantino who's our yeah our illustrator actually he didn't do this cover but he did the entire interior of the booklet uh, um and it's his character work is beautiful and his um just some layout of this, this comic it, it's a gorgeous it's a gorgeous piece of art uh, it's well so done really, and it, really it, it, it uh, I, as you should be like it, it lends itself to so many opportunities visually and storytelling and um and it's funny like you're setting up all the characters uh in the the, the, the two issues and i want complete storyline i want complete universes for like each of these folks i want to know what like they eat for breakfast and you know their their loves and their their pain and their family tree. Like it's good fun. Yeah. And that's some of the, you know, that's beauty of how we want to work inside of this process. Like what does it mean 
trying to create characters and then give those characters to a community. Now, we've created a kind of a framework, a skeleton, uh, on which the story these characters, you know, it's, it's your character to take and do what you want with. It's a little undefined. So it's a, call it a PFP project if you want to wear it as a digital idea. Also a character that is you know, to build and create with um, within the sandbox that was kind of put to professionals. And, and I th think uh, people will find that really um, and just the right amount of, of you know, it, I don't know, the right amount of guidance to ideas. You know, you talk about how, how one of the worst things creatively is to sit and sketch. It's just so, it's so difficult to start from, from nothing. And yet, if you start from something, if you and you know, you know, this planet evolved from a not a warrior based culture, culture. So way back in the day, two tribes would meet, and one 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 runner from each tribe would run past as one, and that's how they would settle conflict. Now, if you that idea as a culture, culture, now these these tribes are nations, and these nations are raising in these high tech. Uh, even to the extent that once every 800 days, kind of on our planet, um, every nation on the planet Omega nominates one person they call a prime, even though they're more like pilots at this point. <laughs> and they race in this multi-state all the way around the continent. And the winner of that race is uh, of the world, basically the king or the emperor. And that is the political political system right like yeah and you say okay if that's how people settle disputes and if that the hallmark of success mm -hmm. and on this world what is do for every other aspect of life um nations where racing is almost a real practice and they race on these vehicles that are like almost they're, they're called uh they're called scramblers but they're sort of like a open air motorcycle type they race this way yeah because they feel like in order to race properly they have to be like immune with nature right mm -hmm. and so they can't put themselves inside of an enclosed cab now they're incredibly advanced prosthetic limbs <laughs> Because they end up blowing up a lot. <laughs> like, how do you take details like that, right? Which are which are based into the design, right? That was when we had that idea, and we we're like, yep, that, is, that sounds Gondwani to me. And uh, um, the narrative, and now those, those things exist. And now, if there's any piece of that that I was explaining to you that kind of sparked your brain, oh, I could, I, I'm going to write about this. Yeah. I, I have a story I want to write about inside of this culture. You know, suddenly we've given you just enough of a palette that you can kind of go in and pay. Um, it's a kind of creativity that people don't get to do actually really outside of, of Web3. It's kind of a whole new thing because, you know, you'll, you'll see people um, say meme culture where people are inspired by things they see on the internet and they take it and, new and put it back out into the world. Um you see it in fan fiction and you see it in these channels, but there's no way to do it officially because the way our copyright system works in this country is not yours. You can't use it if somebody else built it. Um, or you, if you can, you can't get a business. It's only ever going to be a hobby. It's only ever going to be this sort of like secondary. And, you know, I think it's kind of bullshit. I think it's how people like to create and how creative people like to work together which is kind of share within the same uh share share within the same vertical and web three and the tokenization of rights allows you to grant somebody you know access to a certain amount of ip without 
having to go through a dual sort of like lawyering process. That's right. <laughs> and so um, that's the promise here. And it's like, okay. Um, from an IP perspective, I mean, that's actually really innovative that, um, you know, escapes a lot of people it's in this day to day. I think it's, it's really, really exciting. Uh, you, you know, I, oh, we, we, we have, uh, let me see if I can get this. Word. Oh yeah. Oh, you got some props online from our man prism, uh, on, on publishing. Oh yeah. Uh, Are we also publishing using web two techniques? Yeah. Um, the goal is once we have five, five issues, we're going to do a, a print book. We do have our first edition comic that was shipped to, um, the first first edition. So that is sort of a traditional self-publish deal. But our goal is to go through a, a you know, real publisher in bookstores. Yes. Uh, and to do that publication, which is basically a collection of the first five or six floppy issues. Or the initial story arc is complete. Those can get bound together in like a hundred page book, proper spine, and just uh, published that yeah. way. And, you know, I think that's our idea, which is, okay, you know, you know, a traditional media company with access and experience to all these traditional media companies, uh, specifically distribution networks, whether it's television or movies or, you know, things like comic books and publishing. And so let's create something for Web3 and focus on something that can be kind of a web two product. And my deepest people told me, well, again, of course I want the community, of course those are the like the priority focus, but long term for the project, the best thing for everyone is if it is a book on a noble and somebody could cross it and they look at it and they oh what's this? And they buy it. Right. And they become a fan. And they don't even know it's an NFT. Right. Right. And then if they want to dive in, they can go, oh my God, this was launched as a different kind of project on a token, become part of the community that way. That sounds exciting. Or maybe I'll just remain a fan of these people that buys the comic book. And when the movie comes out, I'll go see the movie. Right. And that is a perfectly okay way. And I think, um, You know, it, it, it's in dark blocks, which is all about token gating access to material. And I think that's really a fun and close and to give everyone access to the, especially the first edition holders to like every single edition stuff. Uh, but long term, you can get your content because the real, the real viable game is to be water cooler conversation. For, mm -hmm. or, you know, it, it's table conversation with the whole family. And you don't do that, that behind the token paywall. You do that in these traditional media tra channels where simply casual viewers can show up and go, oh, yeah. And then can contribute and participate. So uh, um, the goal is, of course. I got, I, I, you know, um, uh, I want to send Blaze. Hey, Blaze, if, you, if you're listening, all right, imagine a tribe of people that are too fat uh, and don't know how to fix cars, and but we're really fast at typing. So uh, I'm, I want some sort of uh, uh -huh. where typing speed is rewarded uh, in your uh, in your universe. Uh, <laughs> you know what? Actually, right. You could have right now. It's all about it's all about you got to translate like you got to translate if there's like, like an entire group that's trying to like race drones. And they're just like, why does the pilot have inside of the vehicle? Why not? You, you can see that being like a very, right. you know, the, the next level of technology. What's happening right now inside, we're going to pick up on this in the first two issues, which is that we have this thing called the pinch. And the pinch is a worm. And this te technology has existed actually for decades inside of our world. But uh, uh, it's really, really like they've, mounted these giant cannons on these uh blast a hole in space time 
and you can find what's called a pinch pinch you thread the pinch and you can come out in you know 10 feet 10 miles 100 miles in and in the race situation that can be the difference between winning and losing and that can be a huge advantage so unstable lots of people have died lots of people have blown up disappeared inside of pinches uh, um you know m- most uh of these however we have one one team from the republic of quorum and uh, easily the most put upon nation uh-huh. um they used to be a great nation but you know they've been sort of ransacked for resources by the avalonian union which has been winning races for decades winning races solidifying their power Power over things, places like Quorum, but we have, have a young with a slightly advanced, slightly more advanced pitch technology that, that allows, um, a little bit less violently, and with uh, a, a rate. And if they can pull it off, if they can do it successfully, they will be able to, to for the first time in many, many, many years, actually compete with. So that's sort of the basis of our, um, you know, the narrative. And I think um, one of the things that we love about this is it's just like, it's a, it's a great, you know, it's a great allegory for, for it's technology in general, mm-hmm. being the great equalizer, powerful and the powerless and the masses, but also specifically crypto and specifically things like um, how the decentralized movement can power to compete with the ruling class in the hands of, of the many. And I think just as a deeper theme for the comic, that's a, that's a resonant tone that um, is something that we really talked about, especially when we talked about taking this project and launching it inside of Web3. We were like, look, perfect medium yeah. to enhance the themes of this story. So that's uh, just something you know, I, I was very excited about. <laughs> uh, you, you know, I've talked to you a couple times, like as, as humans, you know, like in, um, and I, it's funny, you live in this universe, you know, the nuance of your characters, and, and, but you've got two issues out. Like, I ain't there yet. Like, it, it's so, it, it's funny, it's almost uh, sometimes frustrating because it's like you have all these secrets. And things, plot lines, and character development, you know, in in on your hard drive or wherever. Uh, and it's like, dude, when can I catch up so we can talk uh, about these? Like, it, it, it's so is issue three. <laughs> it, it's funny. It's like frustrating almost. It's like I don't know about this guy yet. Uh, I don't know about this yet. Um, when does issue three come out? And then I have one more a question uh, from uh, the, the 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 crowd, and then uh, we'll wrap it up, and I, I I'll, I'll let you get on thankful. Uh, so issue three, when we get there, when do we get it? I think it's it's going to be simultaneous with the art, art uh, with the, the primary collection. We are looking to drop primary collection uh, top of February or um, end of. February, top of March. Okay. And I think uh, uh, we're going to see uh, the comic, another issue of the comic around the same time. Um, there will also be further, we have, have we have a few more, not for everyone, but for a few lucky few, we have uh, more physical print issues of the first edition um, that will be available for whole. Um, so if you'd like to you know, one of the limited print run, yeah. uh, a couple of those out. And, um, all right. So February, I gotta, I gotta get, go into maybe March, maybe South by, uh, time slot. Uh, like that's when I, yeah. 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 And I think, um, one of the, just to go, to go back to your other point, which is like, how is so much of this in my brain? The first thing is I've lived in it for a year. <laughs> Second thing is this is so this is this is, this is what happens though. Uh, this is something in movies and when when you're working with a, a movie level crew, mm-hmm. um, thing to look at a piece of art and say, okay, how how do we make you know 
oh, this PFP do that looks cool in the background? What can we do that makes this, you know, right? That kind of thing. Like, well, you're designing a character. Um, but of the important things when you're working within story is not just a mohawk. It's, oh, would it be cool if there were a story justification for why? Right? Because I'm, de I'm designing this world. So I'm inside of this world that is specific to this world. Just another thing from my world that I'm including to have just another thing. Um, but Bryce, you know, if you dropped an NFT right now that had issues three, four, five, uh -huh. uh, I would buy it right now. Like, honestly, uh -huh. like I want to binge read uh, this universe. Uh, all right, I, I've got I've got one uh, one one question, uh, Bryce, from the uh, the audience. Uh, that's not, I hit the wrong button. Hold on, here we go. Uh, audiobook. Um, what about other medium? You know, we can do so much with Chat GPT and AI voice stuff. And like, do you want to? Well, yeah. What about other mediums? Other like, um... I mean, other mediums for sure. Like about you know, Runner is not. It's not, not a comic book with an NFT designed around it, book and a TV show designed around it. It is, Runner is Runner. Um, and it is the well, black hole in the middle. And surrounding that is the NFT and the comic book. And, the, and you know, I, I talk a lot about it. It's like, like I know, I know I'll be like, I'll know when it's on a cereal box, right? I just want like a runner on like a, on a cherry box. Like that's the... Um, and uh, uh, audio book would be a little tough, I think, I think, just because the comic is visual. Um, if we just comic book, I think, I mean, it's only probably 900,000 words. It's not very much. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, That's an interesting idea. Yeah. I encourage someone to do it. Make it. Go put it up. See what happens. Oh, you double dog dare somebody to go make an audio book. <laughs> uh, or just uh, and send it your way. Like It is in, um, kind of user-generated content, audience-generated audience or curated content. Um, I, I do think that's going to be an interesting world where you can expand quicker and the diehards can love uh, a little bit more and contribute. Um, and it's what it is, is it's collective brand building, best NFT pro projects, right? There's a whole world of people that just buy into an NFT project and then they look at the founder. Next thing, when's the next thing? Yeah, yeah. But the most exciting NFT projects are rumors to build a product and to build a brand and by, by being staked in the success of it. And that's what's so wild and crazy about Web3 is it's like initial uh, token launch and then have, have thousands and thousands of people who are rooting for your success. Right. And also rooting for each other's success. You know, as an individual holder of a project, even if you're not associated with the founders, you can contribute that and find thousands of people that are happy for you to have done that, that are both your first so your biggest champions and that is what creates this sort of feedback loop of uh, uh, within Web3, this sort of, oh, I call it collective brand building or decentralized brand building. And that is incredibly powerful force that has never really been harnessed before Web3. Um, yeah. You can see it in certain websites, you know, you can see it in, of course, Tumblr tried to create its own brand, but the Tumblr brand is created by the users. Facebook tried to create its own brand, but the Facebook brand is kind of created by the users, right? Uh, sort of social sites. But in all of those cases, the the, the users in a Web2 world never know the final product is. Whereas, you know, you look at something like, like the Board API Club, and it's like, yeah, that is, bless up to the founders, but it's the, it's the holders that create the engagement and that create the awareness. 
awareness within that community and that push what that can be when it goes out in a, you know, coffee company, but outside of beverages, there's a real estate farm music label and there's, uh, you know, you know, YouTube shows and all of these things, apparel brands and all of these things only exist because the, the, the users decided to. Um, and so suddenly you've got this brand that is in these verticals that would never for a single team of four people to do over the course of 18 months. Right. But when you have thousands, suddenly the speed at which you can generate new IP and the speed at which you can pass these sort of different areas is just incredibly fast. Um, so exciting about Web3 and, you know, what's so, so exciting about sort of decentralized brand building yeah yeah i um all right w w one more question and then i'm <laughs> i'm hanging up on you like i have taken 46 minutes okay. of your time you were so incredible and i, I appreciate it. you know moonbirds just signed with uh you know um they got representation like a traditional agency talent agency i don't know what the right word is because mm -hmm. i'm not smart like that um you guys i would i would assume the kind of whole Omega Runner as a brand, as a universe, like uh, that would be a, a thing that you would be be doing, right? To like field offers on different things, or how does that? I don't. Is that a thing? How does it work? Yeah. So, as a production side of Hollywood, we are unwrapped officially, um, and the reason for that is because being with an agency, um, it opens a lot lot of doors for you within that agency it can also close doors. Um, it's sort of a mm -hmm. simultaneous process um, I started my um, people inside of our company we're a six person company and we've got people from UTA um, we are very well connected inside of the Hollywood world uh, you, know, you know Verve UTA like all of these places uh, that, you know, we talk to every single one of these companies every single week. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so it's di different for us to sign with an agency like be for, for someone with none of the Hollywood experience and none of the Hollywood connections. Um, reality is it's not necessarily, you know, it, it's one of the, it would be one of those choices that has uh you know it has its benefits and as now we're very very happy being agnostic okay Nick. i was just curious like where web3 world goes and pulls uh old hollywood or old representation into into this new world right um and just the the moon birds yeah and, and, and by, kind of by the way it completely has um every single mm -hmm. one of the agencies has, has a point in web3 ah. uh all kinds of collections uh we know every single one of them you know i've had lunch with every single one of them. like it's not um that is not a foreign world to us uh what they do is they, they work with nft clients inside of the, the agency and then they also work with the agency half of traditional clients so if an actor if a director or somebody who's more inside of their traditional nft um they have somebody in house with a you know a breadth of knowledge and expat process um in our case you know we ourselves we don't necessarily need that guidance um and the nft experience like, like you know i've been in crypto since 2013 i've been around, around nfts a very long time um it's always great to have other people on board to kind of see the intersect and uh, uh, tech and, and Web3. Um, mm -hmm. um, I'll put my knowledge against anybody, frankly. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So I would just want to say thank you uh, for hanging out. Um, when you watch the stream back, you're going to see like audio choppiness. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. But I, I think uh, your message got through. And I think it was good to just keep on going. So technical issues be damned. I hope so. Yeah. Is this one of those 
programs that did it save a, a, an audio that way? Is that what Restream works, or is it a different? I've done a lot of streams recently where, like, what it does basically is record a local file, and it actually uploads the local file and syncs everybody. So you're working with hard I audio gotta... rather than stream term. I don't know, um, but happened? we'll figure it out. Uh, yeah, it, it, we're up on YouTube, and LinkedIn's got us in here, and Twitter's got us in here. Um, but we'll we'll figure it out. And worst case, maybe I steal ten minutes of your time, and we kind of hit the hits again uh, and re-upload it. Like, screw it. We get ADR. Um, <laughs> thank you for having me. Yeah, man. Uh, um, I love uh, for everyone watching. Work at Dark Lux, the rad. You're awesome. Take it easy. Stay dry. Uh, everybody, uh, we're, we're yeah, heading we're on good. over to <laughs> uh, we're heading on over to Discord. Uh, if the nerds want to talk and talk dark blocks, uh, come and join us. Bryce, I will talk to you later. Thank you, sir. Awesome. See you guys. All right, man. Peace. Bye.